Thelma May and Ellie Lou. We're your hosts, Thelma May and Ellie Lou. I'm Ellie Lou, and this is my here friend, Thelma May. And last week, we talked about um, costuming women for a Victorian time period movie. Today, we're going to talk about costuming men for a Victorian time period. Why, Susan? Why? And George, George, could you please bring our tea over? Cause I, it is quite warm out here, and I'd like some tea. And George is a wonderful example of the way that we costumed our man. Thank you so much, George. That's or at least enough. our Thank little boy. So yes, but he he is a man as well. So as soon as George pours our tea, we'll show you how we costumed the first part of our man. George, come over here so the camera can see you. We want to show you off there, George. First off, what we did for our little boys is we bought pants that were slightly too big for them so they would be baggy and make the newsboy baggy look. And then, Ellie Lou, tell everyone what you did once we got these pants at the thrift store that were a little big. Very simple, Thelma. All we did is ran a casing at, along the bottom of the leg. We cut them off just slightly below the knee, ran a casing, and then just put some elastic in that casing that matched their calf measurement. So that way it wouldn't fall down. And then we just kind of bag, baggied them and made them poofy whenever they put them on. Excellent. And we bought some knee socks on clearance at the end of winter for all the boys to wear. And then we also had some vests and we just put them in some long sleeve white shirts. And then the, the wonderful little newsboy hat look that we got donated all these hats to us from people we knew. And so our little boys looked quite handsome that day they in did. their newsboys. Thank you so much, George, for your help. Thank you so much. We had several little boys that day and they looked quite cute yeah. in their little things. But yeah. the knickers, it, the pants worked well if they were actually ladies pants because they were smaller and they could still fit their ways, but they were still kind of big. That's true, the ladies pants did work well. I believe George had on a pair of men's pants there, but we did use several pair of ladies pants that worked very well. You you are right, they, they they did work well. And we could add elastic into mm -hmm. the waistband to or belt them down if we needed to to make them fit. Now let's talk about the way that we costume the men for our uh, Victorian moving picture. Uh, because they had several layers as well, just like the women did, and it was quite expensive for all the suits. So what did we do with that, Ellie Lou? Well, Basically, what we did with the women, we went to thrift stores and we found different discounted suits. We just had to ask our men extras what kind of suit they wore. Sometimes we would get jackets and they would bring their own dress pants that would sort of match. Some of them had full suits on. Exactly. And, and the camera hides lots of things like that in your extras that are walking around that, that make the movie without the extras. It would look really stupid to have, yeah. you know, one or two people up there. But the camera does hide some of that stuff and make it, it possible for you to be able to do that. And we, we were very lucky. We found a thrift store that on uh, Sundays... Uh, it, they had certain things that were marked down to 99 cents and so we could go in there and buy suit coats and 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 uh shirts white shirts dress shirts at 99 cents a piece and that was wonderful 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 but you know the camera hides some things that you don't want to hide and one of the things that the camera hid that we did not want to hide was that lovely vest that you made for yeah. our character lynn played by nathan now yeah. show us that because you did such a lovely job on it i want everyone to see that ellie well this vest was worn by um, our actor, Nathan McNally, he played Lynn G. Brighton in the film. And this is the vest he wore. It's made out of, this part is silk, but we got it for a discounted price. And then this part is just kind of like a suede black fabric. It was a little cooler because, you know, he had to have so many um, layers. And then these are the fake welts we sewed on. And this is what he wore in the film because his character was very rich and so I wanted him to look kind of rich and important. 
So that was the whole reason for the fabric. Fabric and colors in your costume add to your character's character. So that's and, and he was quite important. He was a doctor. Yes, he was. As well as being a um, preacher and he was on uh, a return from London so we wanted him to look very sophisticated yes and and I wanted to show it today because you did such a lovely job but the camera hid most of it because of the suit coat which brings out a lovely point that we need to talk about in costuming for movies for independent movies is a lot of times those little flaws will be hidden and so it's okay you don't have to stress over over your uh, costumes as much as you think you might should because I know that that uh, you know you spent lots of time on that that vest and yet we really didn't get to see it it added so much to it to have it of course they called them waistcoats during this time period to have the waistcoat but but it was hidden some so now another thing that we did to costume our men and that was they all had to have, like we said, the men all had to have their suit pants and their suit coats and a waistcoat or a vest and their their uh their white shirt. But they also had to have a tie. And so we did three different styles of ties that were popular in that time period. I'm gonna lay them out and let you talk about how we made some of these, Ellie Lou, since you did make most of these ties. Well the first one was the classical bow tie. This is a bow tie we made, which we actually made out of a regular tie. You can find on the internet on how you can make a tie out of a bow tie, excuse me, out of a regular tie. And then, then we added Velcro to the back, so that way it would fit multiple sizes necks. Because sometimes we'd use one tie for one person in one scene, and then we put it on a different person in their scene, so that way it changed it up a little bit because we would use the same costumes over and over so we didn't have to buy them. Yes. Now this is our second tie. This is a cravat. Cravat. This one was used for uh, uh, Ethan who played our piano. Yes, he did yes. such a good job. A cravat, um, it was an interesting tie. You could tie it like a normal tie or you could puff it up like we did on Nathan and it would look like uh, an ass card, like my yes. yes. Yes, and so you can do many things with a cravat, but they cost for more fabric. So we didn't do as many of them, but we put a lot of these on our main characters, or like some extras that had a speaking part, we put those on there. Yes, and, and in another way, we, we really liked the look of the cravat, and that was quite popular in that time period, and we didn't want everyone in a bow tie, so we decided, we found several ties at the thrift store that we really liked the design of, so what we did is we opened those ties up and we took the lining off and, and sewed them on the sides. They are closed, made little seams. And then we ironed everything down nice and flat. So we only opened to about right here. And that made it be nice and big so that when we tied it, it looked more like a cravat, but it had a lot less, less fabric. So we did several like that that looked quite well. Um, an, one example is on um, a Mr. Kevin at the memorial scene. Of course, when, the clip that we'll see of Mr. Kevin, it was after lunch and Mr. Kevin's cravat had gotten shifted and moved over a little bit there. And so it's not hanging just right, but it, it, does, it, it does show that cravat. But you know, it, Mr. Kevin doesn't always Pay attention to those things, and we missed it as the costume directors. We we fell on our job there. We and did. Lou, we did, and we allowed it to get on film that way. And the uh, heads was made out of a tie like this green. Yes, 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 it was. Now another thing we did for the men is they all had to have waistcoats, and waistcoats took, took time and fabric to make. And we were lucky that we found a um, a sundry type store, a, a store that had uh, damaged materials or overstocks that were for sale, and we were able to get several nice waistcoats for the price of what we would have put in our fabric. And so we used those for several of our extras and our people. But we needed a few people that we made what we termed a vib. Yes, Tell us it's about a, that, Ellie Lou. Well, it's a Thelma May and Ellie Lou special. It's a vib. Basically, it's just the front part of a vest without the back. And it hangs on your neck right here. 
and buttons up the front so it looks like from the front it's a regular vase and it cost about half the fabric as a regular vase and, and we just had ties on the yeah. side just this one was our colorful bib yeah. or our colorful character that Mike played. Yes, this bib you can see on Mr. Mike Brock. He played our music director in the memorial service. So you can look for his bib in there. And on camera, it looks just like a regular vase. But really, if he took off his jacket, you would see it was just a regular bib. Yes, and we, we got that name Vib because it kind of looks like a big bib, but it's a vest. Yes, so now we we took care of um, our extras with lots of thrift store clothes, and some of them provided their own, like you had mentioned earlier, but we did have um, one particular that we costumed from scratch, or that you costumed from scratch. I do believe you made that entire outfit that yourself, and that was Mr. Riley. So since you made that, tell us about it, Ellie Lou. Well, you see, suit coats in that time period buttoned up really high like a shirt. And we wanted, since Mr. Riley played Sam Jones, he was kind of one of our main characters, we wanted his to button up high. And we could never find a suit coat that would fit him and that would button up high. So what we did is for his jacket, we used a pajama pattern. Really? Now, isn't that interesting? A pajama pattern. Yeah. Wonderful. Why don't you tell the viewers a little bit more about Mr. Riley's outfit? Well, the pants. We use a Civil War pattern with the pants, and then we added buttons so that way some button-on suspenders could be in it. His vest, we used um, another pattern we bought. And then his shirt was from the same pattern that we used to make the vest. His was completely made from scratch. It was uh, my first suit coat and it was different from some of the things I, I made. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, but you did such a lovely job with it. Thank with you. it, Ellie Lou. It looked quite nice. He looked quite handsome that day. The only thing I guess that he wore that was not um, made from scratch out of his uh, costume there would have been his bow tie and that was one that was made from a regular tie but of course yes. you made those as well. So those were all wonderful things that we were able to do to costume our men and make them look more Victorian. Uh, they did look quite well and although during the Victorian time period a man never would have been seen without his jacket to be seen in his shirt sleeves would have been like seeing him in his underwear but we knew it was quite hot for our extras and so at <clears> one point we allowed them to take off their jackets and walk around in their vest coats there at the dinner on the grounds. Um, we felt it was best to have live extras than those that had passed out on us yeah. from the heat. But so. a bad thing about that was the ones who had vims on, of course they didn't have a bath. So they couldn't take off their jacket or you would see that it was only a half bath. So that wasn't quite our brightest idea but it did work so some things you just kind of have to think through and figure out what you're going to do with them trial and error well thank you so much for coming back this week yes thank you so very much we've had such a wonderful time and we hope that maybe some of our tips will help you and if you have any questions please email us at yes. Productions at gmail.com we would love yes. to hear from you yes. yes we're more than happy and if you would like to order a dvd they'll be out soon we just gotta be a little more patient there in the editing and we are always looking for suggestions as well so if you've yes. got great tips of how to costume we'd love to hear from you on those yes. as well yes. thank you so much for tea time with you ellie lou i have had such a wonderful time and we'll have to do it again soon we shall why don't you say goodbye to your <laughs> friends Yes, bye Mr. Junior.